Hello there. This is Susie with Gemini Connect, and for today's video, I'm about to do a real estate photo shoot, so I thought it'd be fun to bring you along. So let's head out and do step number one, which is figure out how to get inside of the unit. So normally that lockbox is on the door handle of the unit, but sometimes because this is an apartment complex, we had to hide the key elsewhere. Let's head to the car, pick up the camera gear, and get inside, start shooting. Okay, not gonna lie, that was a little strange. And I was actually warned ahead of time by the person who hired me that, yeah, getting in here was gonna be strange. Case in point, to get through the main door, there's a fob, but the fob was like under the call box. So I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out just how to open the main door. But we got inside and this is a super small unit. So typically when I do real estate, it's either apartments, so they've been newly remodeled and they're usually fairly big, usually one or two bedrooms, uh, sometimes studios, and usually also houses. So this is a particularly small unit. So now that I'm inside, the first thing that I do is just put my stuff down and take a walk through the whole unit. And in the process, turn all the lights on, make sure the windows are open, and just kind of scope it out and get an idea of what kind of shots I want to get or what kind of angles to get. So let's go ahead and do that first. This is the main living area. I wasn't actually warned about how small this place is, but this is totally a studio. Here's the bathroom. Super, super straightforward. Some storage. Oh, in unit washer dryer. That's really nice. And a little coat closet here. And decently spacious closet. Even a dresser. And kitchen. And yeah, this is, this is really it. So on that note, let's go through the gear that I brought. All right, so first things first, the tripod. This is my Manfrotto 055 tripod. It is uh, really heavy and it's big, at least for my size. So this is a tripod that I usually use at home, but if I'm doing real estate or if I need a super stable base, then this is the one that I use. And it, uh, I believe, comes with the head, but if not, this is a head that you can buy separately. This is the Manfrotto MH804-3W. It's really heavy duty, but again, really great if you just need a super stable tripod head. This is my Peak Design bag. Uh, not the biggest fan of it, but you know, it looks really great and it does the job of holding my gear. It just isn't particularly comfortable, but in the meantime, this is still the bag that I'm using for most of my photo shoots. And inside we have the 5D Mark III with the 16-35 f2.8 lens. And my trusty Canon 580 EX2 speed light. This I believe is discontinued. It's been replaced by the Canon 600. But you know, same thing. I've had this forever, bought it used, knock on wood, never had any issues with it. So even older camera gear, it's totally fine for most purposes, especially still photography. You can do professional paid photo shoots with it. You don't need the latest and greatest gear. And I also have my a7R 3 with a 24-70 f4 lens. This is not really for interiors. There was an additional request, and I can understand why now, uh, to get some neighborhood shots of the park across the street and just some other attractions in the area. And that really is because there's just not a lot to shoot in this unit. Um, so I can understand that they just need a little bit of extra photos to sell it to somebody. And that really is it. So first things first, take out all the gear that you need, take your jacket off or whatever, and put it away. Put it out of sight, just don't forget about it, but make sure it's hidden so that it doesn't show up in your photos as you're shooting. There's a little cabinet down here. So again, just make sure you don't leave it here. So the tripod, you usually just extend the legs down one, that's typically enough. And I can show you here how this head works. So there's uh, really just three handles or three buttons. This one controls it going you know, up and down. This one goes side to side. 
and then this one swivels it around. And you know, this looks like a really heavy duty tripod head, but if you've used ball heads before, then you probably know the struggle of those ball heads just starting to slide over time. So when you first get it, it probably locks into place really well, but over time, especially if you use like a heavier camera, like this 5D Mark III, it just really weighs on that ball head and it's really hard to keep it stable. You, you like set it up, then you notice your camera kind of sinking. And so I dealt with that for years. And then finally, several years ago, I caved bought this tripod head and it's been so much steadier. So I just thought of a little challenge or something to add to this video, which is using my cell phone, the Samsung Galaxy S10, which comes with a triple camera, including the ultra wide lens and comparing those shots to what I get with the Canon 5D Mark III. So we're gonna turn this into a little game. I'm gonna show you all the images and A or B and you guess in the comments below, tell me which camera you think is shooting these images. As you're shooting a space, it's really good to just start at the entrance or start on one side and kind of work your way through it and that way you don't miss any important shots. Oh boy, so it's usually really hard to shoot in apartments anyway, but this one is like especially small. And you know, some people might use a wider lens. If you shoot an icon, then you might have the option of using the 14 to 24. And that would be very welcome here because 16, even on my full frame, we're struggling a bit. So a few notes, if you're, especially with closets, it's a good idea to give your client some options and shoot with the closet doors open and with them closed. This is especially important if you have a closet like this that has a washer and dryer because you want to definitely show that there's a washer and dryer in unit. Uh, depending on your market, that you know might be a really rare thing. Um, in fact, here in Seattle, I've rented a lot of apartments. They usually do come with a washer and dryer. I've been super fortunate, but some of them do not. And so that's a really big feature that you wanna be sure to highlight. get to my least favorite part of real estate photography which is the bathroom it's really hard to not get yourself or your camera in the mirror uh, as you're shooting in fact it's near, nearly impossible which is why it's really important to have Photoshop or post-processing skills to be able to take yourself out of reflections there are even some condos and houses that like to use decorative mirrors and while that can be really fun for you know creative shots it's really a pain in the butt when you're trying to shoot and you end up in all of those mirrors and reflections let's go ahead and tackle this guy Well, the nice part about shooting bathrooms is that they're so small that there's usually only one, maybe two different angles that you can actually get from the bathroom. So once you've got the shot, like you're done. Another thing I try to do whenever I'm shooting a space is to go wide to show the relationship between spaces. And so right here, that's gonna be really key because I can get a wide shot that shows that, you know, here's the kitchen relative to the closet, relative to the main room. more food for thought. Should you be shooting with a flash? Should you be doing HDR? What's the photography? I just broke the shoot. <laughs> Let me put that back on. There we go. Okay. Was not permanently broken. Put it back together. But yeah, um, in terms of photography technique, should you be using a flash, HDR, long exposure? What should you do? And again, that really varies. Uh, I come prepared to do both. I do not typically use off-camera flash or really elaborate lighting setups. Because of the budget, you really have to think about, you know, what are they willing to pay you and what is your time worth? And if it's not, you know, enough money to make it worth spending hours getting one or two shots right, then go with HDR, go with on-camera flash, go with 
whatever you can do to make the best image in as little time as possible or just whatever you think is worth your time. So whenever possible, I really think it's best to try to use flash just because it helps to uh, get your colors right in the room that you're shooting. Uh, if you depend on natural lighting, then you can't always guarantee natural lighting conditions. And those conditions can even change as you're doing your shoot. So it's really hard to get consistent images if you rely too much on natural lighting. You can also have some really funky internal lighting colors. Sometimes your light bulbs can be a mix of incandescent and daylights, and you can have some really funky color casts coming from the light bulbs or the lighting in the unit. And so if you use flash, you can better control all of that, save yourself a lot of time in post-production. So in a smaller unit like this, one of the benefits is that you know, it's a really low ceiling. It's a really small unit, so I can just use on-camera flash. I just you know bounce it off the ceiling. It's a white ceiling, so it just really fills in the space really, really well. I'll show you some comparisons here of using flash and not using flash. And a third comparison of using HDR in that same setting. All right, so I think we've wrapped up. Got all the shots we can get in this little studio apartment. And so after you're done shooting, uh, go through the whole place again, turn all the lights off, close the windows, draw the blinds, uh, leave it as it was when you got here. And make sure that you grab all your stuff and you're done. Return the key to the lockbox and yeah, that's it. So with that, I'll now reveal the answer to the comparison photos. And let me know in the comments below, how did you do? Did you guess correctly? Uh, did you have any surprises about the quality of imagery that you saw based on the camera that shot those photos? Do you think a smartphone is as good as a full frame DSLR camera? Let me know what you think. And thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos. And I'll catch you in the next one.